Are you any good at impressions? No. Nah. I sometimes if I do them in conversation, sometimes I get it like boom. Yeah. But then other times it's like what are you is that a Welshman? You no, <laughs> Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> so it keeps him out of. Um, Not even speaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Welsh rapist? <laughs> <laughs> drink, just drink your drink. <laughs> <laughs> drink your drink. <laughs> 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 Was that a Welshman? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> uh. So it keeps them out. I, I don't ever really try to do them uh, in my show, which, um, you know, with the way that they've gone back forensically through everybody's act since 1982 and said, see, you're doing an accent there. That's cultural appropriation. One of my favorite, I won't ask you to do it because you might get in trouble now. Like obviously, as you just said, but I remember watching you when I first started watching you. And you used to do a bit about working in a Chinese restaurant. Ah, yes, and it was absolutely fucking fantastic. <laughs> 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 and I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I have little weird like I have mad affectations. My missus thinks it's hilarious that like I'll, I'll sing little snippets of songs or I'll say little. I, I think it's like it's not Tourette's, but it's like kind of I'll just constantly do these. If I'm on my own or if I'm walking around the house, I just whistle and say little things to myself. And you saying your name in Chinese is one of the things I say <laughs> okay, all of the okay. time. Can we just can we just put the car in park for a minute because. Both me, Carl, and the the fifteen thousand people who download this can every week the need some fucking context. I can't say the joke. Yeah, I mean, it's no, not it's not right. I'm, I'm making. I it mean, like I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. With you. Yeah, it won't be the first time someone's done a Chinese accent on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, that Nightingale hosted it. Afnan. <laughs> yeah, it was three episodes before we found out that he wasn't in fact from Beijing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, here's what I'll say about the China bit. Uh, it it is it is quite a lengthy bit and I will still stand behind it, although I wouldn't perform it the same way I do now. But it was a bit about how Al Qaeda fights the West because they're like, Oh, you're trying to stop our religion. Totally glossing over the fact that uh, Islam is illegal in China <laughs> and that they should be fighting China. <laughs> like we're actually quite nice to them as opposed and it went on to this long bit about how if they even tried any of this shit against China, they'd end up in concentration camps. Well, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, people can get mad at that bit. Like, yeah, that bit where you predicted the future? That was totally... <laughs> that was totally... Now, accents were done. <laughs> <laughs> but it was over. It starts with um, me saying... The reason China hates Google so much <laughs> it's not freedom of information is make it something we can say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, to, and then I offered to name it Cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> not that one either. <laughs> <laughs> It came in, uh, and then you sort of, you, I would I would take it back and go, I, I realize that some people will think that that's, uh, that's inappropriate um, to, uh, to say things, but I come by that honestly. I'm from Vancouver. I grew up surrounded by Chinese people. I worked in a Chinese restaurant where every day... The owner of that building would try to say the name Glenn Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and every day would fail quite miserably. I heard a lot of Gwoof. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to turn to my boss and say, No, Larry. <laughs> That's not how you say it. <laughs> And wonder quietly to myself why a man who got to choose his Western name, knowing full well he could not pronounce L's or R's, would pick the name Larry. It's more than half. Oh, I thought you people were good at math. <laughs> oh, 
very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and when I did it on the comedy store, I did, I did, that's when it's on TV, and I'm sure they've probably... That's right. I, I had that recorded. I used to watch it religiously on the, the Comedy the, Central at the Comedy Store. Th- yeah, oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The live at the store. You see what they do though. There was two Chinese people in the crowd, and any time it got <laughs> even close to the edge, they put, put it on, yeah, <laughs> laughing away like, in the exact same way every time. In a way, oh, they they laugh just the same way every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, she always slaps her leg three times. <laughs> It's funny how that works, isn't it? When you start talking about a certain subject and if there's someone in the crowd or who seems like they are part of the joke, the rest of the crowd do sort of have a check oh, to make yeah. sure. Sh- yeah. like, and also, so I had a bit in my last show that I've I've now sort of been because I've I've put it online in a <laughs> in the little special I put out, which is about how we don't trust Muslims in this country because they don't drink. And the reason I can back that up is, you know, Irish people did a lot of terrorism and we got over that quite quickly because they like a drink. And I was doing it, I'd done it like for three shows at the store and then the late show on the Saturday night in London, the front two rows on the side were just like guys in full dish dash, like Muslim Brotherhood guys. And I think it was, who was comparing? I think it was Sally Ann Haywood maybe. Or she was on and she was like, you're not going to be able to do that bit because... And I was like, well, if I can't do it when they're there, then I shouldn't be doing it at all. <laughs> yeah. And I did it, and you literally see, I did it, and you literally seen 400 people at the comedy store go, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird... Um it's a weird thing when people just make assumptions for a group like, oh, you, you couldn't really speak about them in public. I, they just like everybody hates to be talked about and la- joined in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not the kind of Muslims that would be angry about stuff. Like they're at, no. they're at the comedy store. <laughs> like, <laughs> at like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> not the early show, not Thursday. It's it's tomorrow on Saturday yeah. night. If it was Speaker's Corner, <laughs> I would say maybe don't hit it go heavy. I, yeah, I, I was at Speaker's Corner once and I'd never, like, I unbelievable. And I, I ended up seeing them on a, documentary they these were bad dudes what speaker's corner i don't know what it- it's at hyde park it's 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 a it's a british um, tradition the guy believed it's back to the 1800s where there's a place in hyde park where every sunday you can go and say whatever the fuck you want and people take little soap boxes and uh it, it, like it's it, it's oh, have i never been here that sounds cool i didn't even know it existed uh, it was the first internet <laughs> you know, it was Twitter live. <laughs> I want to go there now and just see a lot of horrible CD porn. Yeah, <laughs> that girl got a tail. Uh, I want to go and see a football badge. Call me a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> an unfunny, fat, cockeyed cunt from an Everton badge. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great that two guys from Liverpool hadn't even heard of Speaker's Corner. It's just in your head like, oh, you can just say whatever the fuck you want anyway. Why do you have to go all the way to London to do that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sounds like Liverpool in London. (laughs) Did a Scouser build this? (laughs) (laughs) Whose idea was it? it? There should be one of them in Liverpool, though. It's Hot Water Comedy Club. (laughs) I do love out. That's one of my favorite things about hot water. There's been, obviously you were there last weekend and I popped down to see you both and whatever. And, um, what I love about Paul, the owner is, uh, when a comic has, cause they've had so many videos go viral and the, a lot of the comics that are regularly booked there, like, you know, I've said some shit on stage that if you take it out of context, at least could be taken one way or the other. Freddie Quinn is like, there's one routine that we won't talk about on here, but he got in trouble for a bit. And yeah. I do love out. A lot of comedy clubs in this day and age are like, well, you know, like we're going to remove the video and like we're really sorry and whatever. But Paul at Hot Water is just like, it's a fucking joke. Shut the fuck up. We stand behind our comic. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, he's, he he, 
He's sort of like, yeah, well, literally every time you write a nasty comment or say that this should be taken down, you're actually pushing our video up the algorithm. It's actually a really good thing for yeah. us. It's more traffic. Yeah. I do love how he stands behind the comics. If you'll excuse me, we're just about to sh sell out the third show of the day. So um, <laughs> I have to tell you to fuck off because you're making my fingers tired and I need those for the accounting of all the money that I'm making right now. I need to type into the till. <laughs> <sighs> so, so you'd go BNP. Uh <laughs> <laughs>